Good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you for coming out in this weather because as my better half will tell you, I don't do this weather. Uh, but for those who don't know me, I'm my name is Wanda Herbert Romaine. I there's a black screen on it, that's fine. Um, I am a very proud 1985 graduate, and that is my homeroom sister of the McDonough 35 Senior High School, Ron Eagles. And uh, since I talk about myself a lot, let me just summarize this. Su summarize this. I am a teacher. I am a recording secretary. I am a historian. I am a photographer. I am a self-appointed ambassador. I am a hype man. And to some people, a pain in the butt. If, yeah, him, but that's okay. And to one of my colleagues, not the one here, I am obsessive about 35 history. Okay, yeah. I am the historian. It is part of my job. <laughs> but what I also am is very passionate about sharing the story that people think they know. Okay, they know what I call a very myopic and narrow narrative. Yes, we all know 35 is what the First public high school to be educated after what grade? After eighth grade, okay? Everybody knows that. But what is something that everybody doesn't know that Mr. Kirk can tell you is on that banner? Oh, by the way, Mr. Kirk Thomas is someone who really, really, really helped me with this presentation. So yes, uh, class of 2099 to the 2000. There is another fact on that banner that says what else 35 is in New Orleans for high schools. It is the first, begins with a C, co-ed the first co-ed public high school in New Orleans, regardless of the identity of the population of the students. S See, I saw your face. <laughs> <laughs> and that's something like, that's something I when doing my research. I'm like, okay, we got that. We got this. What else is there? And that's how I fell into the rabbit hole called research. And this is the first time I've come up for air in about three years. So with that said, let me introduce you. Okay, this is technical difficulty, not me. There we go. ASC 35, getting to know McDonough 35 prison. Yeah. ASC. In other words, not for public knowledge yet. It's not for public knowledge yet. <laughs> <It's> not... <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. It is presented by me. My name is Wanda Romaine. I am a storyteller and educator. And when I don't have it in my face, a photographer. And I am very old. I do have to wish today is my niece's birthday. She is no longer in her 20s. Uh, so. That's me as a freshman. That's me as a senior. Um, I'm a very proud graduate. I've been researching this for almost a decade. I still don't know everything. I'm still discovering things. So if you ask me a question and I don't know, please forgive me because I do not have a time machine. No matter how many times I have asked the STEM students at 35 to build me a time machine. However, the rabbit holes and the side trips and all this that I've been exploring is fascinating. And I didn't realize it was fascinating to Miss Amanda. So thank you. And uh, so I want to thank y'all for joining me on this time warp again. That's for the people who like the Rocky Horror Picture Show. Uh, to this ride that I call ASC 35. Before we begin, though, I do have to ask your indulgence. Last week, my classmate and I, Yvette, we lost a classmate, Angela Henderson Casimir. We also lost a very 
good, strong-willed teacher, Miss Janice Carter. And for 10 seconds, if we could all just have a moment of silence for our guardian, Ron Eagles in the sky, I'll be counting no word. Thank you. Because now those are stories I can't get. And I love putting game shows into my learning and teaching. So the game show we're going to play today is Classic Concentration. So here are the rules to participate. This is what I would look like in the 80s. AI is so wonderful. <laughs> uh, look at the symbols in the puzzle. You have to sound out each symbol. And the plus sign means to blend or combine the sounds. Y'all, I feel like I'm back in class. All words in a black and white box. Any words in a speech and thought bubble are to be read exactly as they appear. You don't have to think too hard. Oh, no, we good. When you see a picture of something that has more than one of the same symbol, just use the regular plural form. Like if you see a group of geese, do you have to say gaggle? No, you just say geese. The last two are very McDonough 35. <laughs> and that is why you are working how? Together, <laughs> together. So here's how it goes. You have the, right, we're not saying what we're not good at. We're saying what we, we can become better. So this is M plus ACK, Matt, Don, no. Sir. All right, so just to let y'all know, you might see me do this because I laugh very loudly. Sometimes, and I got to hold it in because I'm supposed to be a professional. Every All right. So we got through that, right? We understand. We can do this. So what I'm about to do is get you guys to understand something. I will not mention anymore how 35 is the first public high school for Black kids in New Orleans. Everybody knows that. And now everybody knows that 35 is the first pub public, because the actual first co-ed high school in New Orleans is Xavier, what, Xavier Prep. All right, but I do need to explain something about how 35 almost did not come to be. So we're gonna take a little trip back to 1900. If y'all need me to move or whatever, let me know. Think I can, this is from the OS, OPSB records and the Times-Picayune of 1900, okay? It says, in short, this was a decision. Welcome y'all, come on. We, the OS, OPSB recommend that the sixth seventh and eighth grades of the colored schools be eliminated and that the superintendent and this committee be directed to report a scheme of reorganization and a thank you a scheme of reorganization and curriculum for colored schools for the september meeting of the board now, I will say this. They did not mention which September. They did not say which September of what year they were going to reorganize this. Because, and we're going to read the bottom part first, it would be a decade before the school board even put back sixth grade. It would be a decade before they put back sixth grade. Another three years, they put back seventh and eighth. So just imagine being a fifth grade kid. How you doing, sir? I did see you coming in. Imagine being a fifth grade kid 
you think you're going to sixth grade and they tell you no. And I, it, it, it's unfathomable to me. So I can imagine what it would have been to a generation of children who thought they were going to finish school. And the school board said this in their letter, basically, that the black colleges of New Orleans of the day, Leland College, New Orleans University, Straight University, and Southern University would just go ahead on and educate kids from sixth grade through its high school department and on to college. So how many of you want to send your 11-year-old to college to go to middle school? Okay, nobody raised their hand. Can you imagine being a parent in 1900 trying to figure out what are you going to do for your child's education? All right. Y'all did good on that one. No, because the question is, what do you do? The next one, any Southern graduates in here? Oh, there's a lot of y'all. Uh, so y'all know where Southern used to be, right? Okay, so, and in case you don't know, any Xavier Prep, St. Catherine Drexel Prep graduates? Okay, so where, where the Prep is, is where Southern was. Till they got run out which basically says House Bill 136 by Mr. Locke providing for the removal of Southern University from New Orleans. 60 yeas, 38 no's. So now Southern's gone. And what do y'all think that means for, for high school? There is none. Almost 500 kids had their high school education stopped. So you just put back in sixth, seventh, eighth grade, but you took out high school. Or oh, excuse me, the affordable option. Do you send your kids to college that you got to work extra to pay for, or do they go to work? Most went to work. Only a few, maybe 20% had families that could afford to send their kids to Leland, Strait, and New Orleans University. When Southern leaves, there's no high school that's affordable for Black New Orleans to send their kids. So if you follow time, we know what happens, but we, we are going to solve the first puzzle. We know 35 gets open. That would be nice, but that's... <laughs> so if you have... Oh, and I will give you one cheat. Yes, you see the boo, but what does it say? So who wants to answer? All right, on the count of three. One, two, three. Yes, it's a community school for Black New Orleans because it literally took Black New Orleans to open up 35. So 35 opens. I know that my alumni know the date that 35 opens. Don't say it. What is the inaugural day of high school in New Orleans? September 17, 17. 1917. That is our birthday. It was located on 655 South Rampart Street. Uh, if you know where that big parking lot is on Rampart, the parking garage across the street from Entergy, by the Superdome, post office, all that. Think Rouse's. You know where Rouse's is on Barone? It's two blocks from Rouse's. And so, like we said earlier, it is the first public co-educational high school, regardless of the racial identity of the students. It was also the first night school so that working adults can go get their high school diploma. Look what the school board considered a working adult, the youngest of, of a working adult. 14. At 14, I was right there on Warrington Drive. And when I say right there, my house is right around the corner. At 14, I was still on Saturday morning, eating cereal, doing chores, waiting for wrestling and soul train to come on. Oh, I still watch cartoons, but the, oh, all the teachers raise your hand. Retired, 
Thank you. It was also <laughs> it was also the site of the teachers training program from 1923 to 1930. It was the host site for uh, toy and doll fun. Like the black kids would go to the 35 for the toy and doll fun. A whole bunch of other community service drives and students from other parts of Louisiana would come to live in New Orleans so that they could come to high school. If you think, all right, so this community group that led the fight is the next puzzle. It is the Colored Educational Alliance. And that is the group that not only fought to get 35 open, but fought to get about what, 60, 70% of the elementary schools in the city open? Like they were, I don't wanna say gangster, what would, have, what would be a better word? Activists, <laughs> activists. All right, so these were religious folks, ministers, teachers, business folk, just people who took, did not take no for an answer and didn't care. They knew like they knew. That's the next part. So quit being ahead of me. Oh, <laughs> now, can you match the name to the face? Can you match the name to the face? Okay, seven is John Wesley Hoffman. He figures very important. It's a 35 story. And six is Albert Wicker. Okay, one is done. Three is Sylvania Williams. So who does that leave for number eight? Who's the only name left? Taylor. So as, as they said, one is done, two is Coghill, three is Sylvani Williams, four is Fanny C. Williams, five is Walter L. Cohen, six is Albert Wicker, seven is John Wesley Hoffman, and eight is O.C.W. Taylor. If anybody remembers the beginnings of WBOK, the beginnings of the Louisiana Weekly, that's him. But he is one of the Henderson Hollowell Dunn. Sounds like a good department store, like an expensive department store. See, there you go. All Everybody but number eight had schools named in their honor. But Cog Hill and Taylor taught at 35. And John Wesley Hoffman is our first principal. So in my opinion... The Colored Educational Alliance is the founding family of McDonough 35. So if you hear me or you see me on Facebook saying, happy birthday, Miss Coghill, happy birthday, Miss Williams, happy birthday, Mr. Hoffman, August 11th, it is because they fought, fought, fought times fighting to get 35 over. So y'all got through the first puzzle, right? All right. Each one teach one. Okay, this is a, as as Kevin would call a softball. But yes, each one teach one. And this is in honor to all us teachers because, like I said earlier, thirty five was the site for the normal school. And this is getting close to the video. All right. So when you went to thirty five in the early twenties, Mr. Hoffman, if you showed the talent, would say. I'm going to train you to become a teacher. So you would spend another two years. Oh, props to my people, y'all. So Mr. Hoffman said, I'm going to train you another two years at 35 to become a teacher. So you didn't go to college to become a teacher. You went to 35 normal school. And for the first six, seven years of the program, only 35 graduates were went to the program. Only. Um, it was open to anyone who graduated from 35 until 1926. And that's when Principal Hoffman started selectively admitting based on criteria, you know, check off the boxes. Females outnumbered males six to one, literally. And teachers immediately got their assignments. You graduated in June later, here's your job. And this photo is from the 1928 Ron Eagle yearbook, which is the first published yearbook of 35, one year later. Now we're coming up to this. I'm sure a lot of people have seen this. This is a YouTube video that talks about the 1928 class of normal school. This is one at their 68th reunion. So I'm thinking this was 96. 1996. 
Donna 35, and nearly 70 years later, these New Orleans pioneers still stick together. Oh, the volume's low. Well. Story ahead in senior eight, there's been a most unusual class reunion right here in New Orleans. One. The classmates are all women, all African American, one of the first groups of, to, of school teachers to be trained at a time in this century when African American children were first being guaranteed a full public school education. Well, that was almost 30 years ago. Focus, Alec Gifford introduces us to these New Orleans pioneers. Selena Butler Timson is president of this dwindling band of school teachers who have had a class reunion every year for the past 68 years. Dear Lord, we know we cannot make it on our own. So take our hands and hold them tight, for we cannot walk alone. They were all graduates of McDonough 35 High on North Rampart and Girard, destroyed by Hurricane Betsy in 1965. They were handpicked for two more years of teacher training of elementary students. Of the 26 pictured in the 1928 yearbook, only 12 are still alive, most of them the grandchildren of slaves. Annette Minor Leonard remembers that conditions in the black schools of those years were hardly ideal. How many kids did you have in your class? Oh, my goodness, about 75. Years later, when teacher standards were raised, many of them went on to obtain bachelor's and master's degrees, teaching well into the era after the desegregation of the 1960s. Every year, there are fewer and fewer of them for their class reunions. This is a miracle, because just think all those years we have been struggling, and yet we are very proud to be here today. Everything was so lovely. My teaching experience was one that I will always cherish and remember. Despite all of the hardships, I consider those years and those times the best years of my life. Drinking champagne would have been unheard of in those lean years when they mostly walked to school to save their seven cents of streetcar fare for use only when it rained. Finally, it was time to say goodbye with a closing prayer. May the Lord watch between me and thee while we are absent one from another. For Senior Focus, this is Alec Gifford. And that is a beautiful story. The youngest of the group is 85, the oldest is 88, and they're hanging together. That's a great story. No kidding. Mm -hmm. Well, but could you imagine being in a room with 75 children? <laughs> I don't think I want to be a, the kid in a room with 75 children a different different era but i still am thankful for my 22 so yes ladies that's 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 our heritage we come from thank you all right so basically um just think about it i if you had a teacher who was 35 trained both as a student and a teacher <laughs> teacher who was trained at 35 to be a teacher you had the best, and I can say that, okay? And yes, Dave, you count too. Now we're going to come to today's gender. Oh, don't you dare start crying, because if you cry, I cry, and I am not crying. So let me tell you about this new generation of young people. This was the inaugural class of the Inspiring Minds Teacher Prep Program. These are the new generations of teachers, y'all. <laughs> It was established in September 2023, exactly 100 years after the first program. Uh, the leaders of the school, and she gonna be mad that I, that I talked about her kids, and she not kids, so just back me up. Ms. Chantrell DeBesme and Dr. Jaquana Lewis, they two of the leaders that came together and said, we are going to get these kids trained and they gonna do this. Um, the reason I put here the leader of Otis, Otis is the van <laughs> that Mr. Jamie Burns would drive, and he drove him to Capdo, to okay, There were about four schools that participated, and he drove them all the time there. As you can tell, there are one, two, three, four, five young men in that program. And this, this lovely young lady right here, this is Miss 35 from last year. Now we're going to talk about some people. You might know once you see their name. Does anybody recognize either one of these young ladies? What about these young ladies? When y'all see the name, y'all gonna be like, oh. So the young lady to the right is Millie, Dr. Millie Charles. She is the founder of the School of Social Work at Suno. 
and the young lady to the left, that's, that's good right there. The young lady to the left is Miss Mildred Martinez. She is the founder of the Martinez Kindergarten School in the seventh ward that large numbers of kids came through. If you, if you went to Martinez and you were in this room. Yeah, my husband went. All right. And the reason I did it, because I went to Jones right up the street. So I don't see why I couldn't go to Martinez. She was actually in the first class of normal school students. She was actually in the first class. And she founded that school in 1934, the first private kindergarten school for African-Americans in Louisiana, because they found out she got married and they told her she couldn't have a job. So she opened up her own school. And what is her core belief? Education is key. Simple. Education is key. Now, Dr. Charles, I did have the pleasure of meeting Dr. Charles. Uh, she graduated from 35 in 1939 when she was 16. Yes. We, you know, you went to school with one of a, you went to school with a 35 trained teacher. If you went to SUNO for social work, I went to SUNO, but not for social work. You were trained by a 35 teacher. Since y'all already saw it, go ahead on and say the answer. Okay, coming home to, <laughs> coming home to teach, okay? Because that's as close to a mean code as I'm coming. I would like to introduce two people who have come home to 35 to teach in different ways. Mr. Kirk Thomas, if you could just stand for a couple of seconds. And Miss Allison McKinney, could you stand for a couple of seconds? Don't worry. That's a, our, oh, this is cute. <laughs> honestly, when I became a teacher, the last thing I said is, let me go back to 35 to teach. That is honestly something I would not have thought about. Not because I wouldn't have gone to teach the 35, but I just thought I'd be in a different place in life. <laughs> but when you go back to your high school to teach, you just kind of go like, Welcome back, welcome back. I know I had a lovely three, four month stint at 35 and I was just like, no, I couldn't have been like this when I was, when I was in high school. Cause aside from uniforms, what we, maybe an end of a degree, not that different. I mean, put like this, I even will tell you, I wasn't exactly the most social person, but I knew everybody cause I was a journalist, but I wasn't. Like I didn't run in the cafe, I didn't run to get to the cafeteria. <laughs> that was that could have been its own Olympic event. But when you come home, we not lying, y'all. There's some legends in that hallway and that stairwell on the second floor. But when you come back home to teach, you actually see what kind of student you were. So this first gentleman here is the earliest recorded alumnus to come back and teach at 35. His name is Malcolm Lester Braden. His nickname was Bub, and that's how I say it too. When I was that Bub, he graduated. Let's say I think 1923. He is a Howard grad. HBCUs unite. He came back to 35 in 1931 to coach football. If you look down, you see where number 17 is. Mm -hmm. That the gentleman next to him, that's Coach Braden. If you heard of the journalist Megan Braden Perry, yeah. that's her ancestor. He stayed at 35 for about six years. This next one, we all, thank you, we all know. So this is Dr. Mac J. Spears. He's a 1931 graduate. He was the principal of 35 from 1954 through 1967. Now, where did she go when I was going to count her? I know. So I want you to look at it. Miss Gertrude is a member of the last senior class who had Dr. Spears as a principal. He is the only alumnus to serve as our head principal. Uh, he brought in homecoming. He brought in selective admissions. He is the one who led the school board to tell them to get us a good building, excuse me, a proper building. So if you go to 35 on Cadillac Street now, when you come in, when you come into 35 at 4,000 Ron Eagle Way, you will look to the right and you will see the Mac J. Spears Auditorium, just like we had on Kellerick Street. So you have to come to 4,000 Ron Eagle Way to see the Mac J. Spears Auditorium. The 
painting of the murals on the front and the sides was done by Muhammad Yange, an alumnus of the class of 1992. But Dr. Spears is the one that got us that campus on Kellerick Street. And believe me, he did war for it. Now we're going to talk about some gentlemen who came back home to teach. Coach Hicks, that's all I can say. He played basketball. He's like 6'6". He taught at 35 for 38 years. Mr. Palmer, yeah, I had to put him in. Mr. Palmer taught for 24, but they went to school together. I didn't know. Now we come into the names we was talking about earlier. These are young ladies who came home to teach. And the first one, there's a certain generation of us who, who know this name, the one and only Sophia Moore Conway. Senior year English, you could not escape her. And we tried. She taught at 35 for 40 of her 50 years, and she taught at four campuses. This young lady here is Miss Theodore Clifford. She was a 1940s graduate, 44. She taught 30 years at three campuses. Then we have Miss Augustine. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Jean Cunningham Augustine, 1946 grad. She also taught English, 30 years, four campuses. Miss Clifford and Miss Augustine graduated at 16 years old. I'm pretty sure Miss Conway graduated at 16, but I just don't have the records. It was very typical. It was very typical to have 16 year old high school graduates. I do have to shout out this young lady, because if I don't, she going to tell me. Miss <laughs> Con Conway, Miss Cryer, Sylvia Cryer is a legend. She's been at 35 for 18 years, but next year she will have taught high school for 60 years. She is the longest tenured public high school teacher in New Orleans. That's on us, y'all. I'm researching that. And the living legend the living legend herself martha talbot taylor geometry first period i did not do so well <laughs> not that early in the morning that was too early in the morning to have geometry 1952 grad taught at three campuses she is still here with us her birthday is august 1st and when I see her, I always apologize. I'm sorry I was a bad student. Now we come into our youngins. Well, not youngins, because I'm in this generation. At 35, we have a range of teachers from the 80s to the 2010s. That is four decades. Now we're going to, and you, you can't answer this question. Of the 80s, the 90s, the 2000s, or the 2010s, who do y'all think has the most representation of alumni teachers at 35? 90s? Uh -uh. 2000s. All right. The winner is the 2000s. There are approximately 13, 14 teachers just from the, genera just from the decade of the 2000s at 35. That's Coach Stevens, Coach Speed. Y'all, let me just say it like this, to come home and be that young and go teach kids that you almost sort of old enough to be their parent. Well, I'm old enough to be their grandparent, and thank goodness I don't. Oh, no. 20 to 25% of the entire teaching staff at 35 active. We're talking about active, active teachers. Don't give up. Please do not give up. Five decades to get a proper home. So that's the word AIDS, A D because I didn't want to do AIDS. Okay. Five decades to get a proper home on Kellerick. And here's what that means. We know that the school on Rampart just was not that great. It, it was an elementary school. It had been worn down by the time 35 got there. There were no major improvements made for 10 years. Meanwhile, other schools are getting built. Betsy literally tore a wall off the school. <laughs> and when we moved to camp, and then from camp to St. Anne, so another 
elementary school. So here it is, 55 years, 55 years without a real home, without, at least in my estimation. So that's the original drawing of 35. Uh, three point four million dollars. Like I don't know why they couldn't spend the other hundred thousand, but sure. And oh, your windows, yes, windows. We gonna explain to y'all about windows, y'all. So this was uh, 1973, 1974. Yes, we got teased because we went to school with no windows. All right. So here is some articles about the dedication of thirty-five. Um. There's Dr. Spears and Yvette's favorite principal, Mr. Francis, <laughs> Clifford C. Francis, Norman C. Francis, and Xavier. So if you spent that $3.4 million today, it's $25.5 million. I, I do that. I like that. Okay. It's located in Treme, uh, Kellerac, Villery, Columbus, and Murray. Who remembers what side the auditorium was where we all watched the band? What street was there? Columbus. We got a school with some amenities. We got a library, a gym with lockers, <laughs> an auditorium, science lab, business lab, a working cafeteria. He, again, air conditioning, elevator, and the green part of the blacktop. <laughs> And the reason I asked for Allison to stand up is the building that has, the building that's in 35 now, guess what, event? our old homeroom, that's Allison's classroom. Y'all having fun? I forgot to ask if y'all having fun. Okay. Is the first time the population of the school exceeds 1,000. Um, this is when we had all our championships. Coach Kennedy, Ms. Benjamin, Ms. Taylor, Coach Mack, Ms. Jeff. Coach Douglas. Then we have our band director, Mr. Lord L. Harris Jr., who kept sending us to state every year. And an explosion. And the Ronnie led choir led by who? Oh, I'm sorry. Then eventually came what? Uniforms. Oh, yeah, I know. I, for me, no. I came from a Catholic school. That is why I went to 35. <laughs> this is why I went to 35. We had dress code, but not uniform. I was fine. Look, jeans, a tennis shoes, a t-shirt, a baseball cap, and I'm good. No, I just had them in my bag. <laughs> Mr. France would measure skirts. Yes. And yes. you had to go home and you had to come back that same day. Which is why I wore jeans. <laughs> Okay, so you get the uniforms. Now, the, I like the plaid. I do, it's a great looking plaid. So whoever came up with it, thank you. Then we have the first challenge to our school's identity. If anybody remember that whole name changing thing that went nowhere, 93. So the students got together and was like, no, you ain't changing our name. <laughs> like, like, what you gonna do? We gotta change everything else. They won. And 1993, so that's in between y'all, right? Oh, you were, okay, she was there. That's when we won the Blue Ribbon School National, excuse me, Miss Kalise. Miss Kalise. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> so just to let y'all know, this is when I'm not taking pictures and stuff. This is how I act, all right? Then came two things that happened that sort of rocked 35. After Ms. Khalish retired, we had three principals in four years. I'm sorry. Oh, that's his class. Okay. Three principals in four years. Hey, how you doing? I'm your principal. Hey, how you doing? I'm your principal. Hey, how you doing? I'm like, no, that don't work. I got mad when Mr. Francis left. Then came Katrina. That's a whole different story. So I'm going to just skip that part. Because when I, when I skip it, it's just that I was living in New, uh, Tennessee at the time and I heard the stories about how they weren't going to open 35. And I'm crying because they're not going to open my school. But then you got these teenagers down here like, you going to open my school. In fact, one of them is Chuck, you know, way up here. He's 6'6", y'all. But I love Mr. White said, open 35 immediately 
the school has earned that right. And his mom is a 35 grad. In fact, both his parents are 35 grads. So they worked hard to keep it open. They said, all right. But the school board said, you cannot do admissions. Let me say that again, just in case nobody was listening, because now I found the newspaper article. The school board said, you cannot open 35 up with your selective admissions if you charter. So just connect some dots, okay? Along with that, we took in seventh and eighth grade. Still on Kellerick, still on Kellerick. And some people consider that not successful. But what they don't understand is that those seventh and eighth graders that were coming in were second and third grade when Katrina hit. So their, their education was halted or maybe fourth and fifth grade. And so they couldn't quite catch up, but I'm gonna leave that at that. The new school's name, excuse me, the new building, cause it's still 35, was named for a Votech instructor. Cool lady, I read a story. She's a cool lady. Uh, Mr. Kirk, thank you for letting me use these pictures. Um, Cause y'all can clearly see what it says, right? <laughs> That's all I see. <laughs> That's all that need to be up there is 1331 Kellerick. All right, so for all of us who are Kellerick Street kids, we always know this is our building. This is our building. I can tell you where I used to go for the library. And apparently there was a fourth floor. That's, that's what I heard. This one's easy. Thank you. What does it say? The new, like, I, now come on. News. News, okay? News. Because this ties directly into how I got all of this together. Because if it was not for the Louisiana Weekly, being on the microphone reel, microphone, microfilm, microfilm rolls at the main library for free, I would not be able to research any of this because they will tell you, and my husband will tell you, days upon days upon weeks upon months, my entire summer used to be researching these rules. And the very first article that appeared in the weekly was called the what, for, for, for which group? Which is the precursor to the 30, 30 cents, y'all, that's 10. It was, that's worth $10 today. That's still cheap to get in. If you figure the alumni club was what, two to three years after a lot of the graduates graduated. So the weekly is the class, the, the weekly is the class. The weekly is the source that I got 90% of my research that I could go down other rabbit holes to find other information. And again, let me just say this. I'm going to pitch the library. If y'all need to find information on some things with the archives, now we're going to come to because the activity I did all four years at 35 was newspaper. And the school's first newspaper was called The High Smile. And it cost a nickel. It cost a nickel. And you could get a four, you could get a year's subscription for 18 cents. And just like uh, Mr. Kirk with the Ron Eagle Speaks, sir, this is, this is the grandfather of the Ron Eagle Speaks. You publish it, you send your ads, you, you, know, you raise money, things like that. It's a good economical way. That paper was published for nearly 20 years. Then came Betsy, and it just, Betsy was 65, but there were other editions that came out here and there, but Betsy practically wiped out student journalism for, for 35. I don't research other people's school. <laughs> Let me just say that. I don't research other people's schools. So you had regular high school, McDonough 35. Then when you finished 35 and you went to get your teaching studies, the next level was normal school. And that was two years. Yeah, in the same building. Yes. And quit taking all my answers. Just playing. All right. Yeah, a lot of the McKenna's are 35. Um, Oh, yes. In fact, one of the re facility renaming names is Leah Matoire McKenna. And she was supposed to be have her name on the building where 42 is. Probably Lillian, but there was also Leah, Louise. There was somebody else. So, yeah, this is the yearbook. 
I worked on a yearbook. It was hard. I'm just going to say it was hard. But it was awesome because you got to do the whole year. And I did not do photography for the yearbook. I kind of wish I had. Speaking of the Ron Eagle, if y'all don't get this, I'm walking. Enter <laughs> the Ron Eagle. And let me explain how this goes. The Ron Eagle was a superhero. He was the protagonist of action adventure tales that were written and illustrated by the students of the yearbook staff. And that was from 1929 to 19, don't tell me to get out the way. <laughs> from 1929 to 1932, the Ron Eagle predates Superman, Batman, and Wonder Woman by a decade. And the Ron Eagle battled enemies that endangered our students and their education. And this is where I want the music, but it can't happen. For anyone who asks you what is a Ron Eagle, please just refer to this slide right here. Please just refer to this. I am not reading this. Just read, take pictures, I don't care. Just do, okay? Not that I don't, I'm not proud of it, but if one more non-eagle, not the one back there, but if one more non-eagle asks me what is a Ron Eagle after I have said it like five times, it is far off of the American bald eagle. It is, a, it is an eagle made of iron. It is a bird that eats iron. How they say, eat lightning and crap thunder. Um, okay. <laughs> oh, also, the I was dropped for pronunciation. It was not stolen. Okay. And there's actually in the yearbooks, a story written by one of the editors, Merle Watts, that details the story of the Ron Eagle. Therefore, no one should have to explain what's a Ron Eagle, unless y'all feel it. Huh? Yeah, it's in. I think it's in, I think it's in mine. I think it's in mine. Now we're gonna talk about these enemies that the Ron Eagle battled. The first one is Ignoramus. Ignoramus. This is a five. This was written by Romeo Calvin Mayfield and Dixie Sanders. Dixie Sanders, excuse me. Illustrated by Albert Durden. Ignoramus was a winged dragon. The students were. Hmm? What did she say? Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. Um, the students were journey, and they always journey to this great city, city of bliss but found themselves trapped in the veil of gloom. Ignoramus actually either crushed students to death or just ate them alive. Oh, just to let y'all know, the, the, the villains resembled people of the day. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Foul Play, written by Halim Shaikh and illustrated by Joseph Jacques. Foul play was an ogre. The city, the students were trying to go to the city of success, but had to cross the river of toil. That meant swimming. So that's not me. What year is that? Oh, this is 1930, 1931. The first one was 1929. Uh, foul play tricked some students into taking the easy way. Say, come on, hop on, you know, I'm gonna Uber you down the river. Instead of going to the city, they went further out. So the kids had to make a choice. Either I stay on this ride going to my death or I jump in the river and try to make it. Yes, sir. 1928, 1929. 1929 through 1932. Gentleman in the back. Oh, that's, this is a young lady. Okay, don't worry. This is probably 1930, 1931. Okay, so now I have another homework assignment. <laughs> I don't know, but now you've given me another homework assignment. Another homework assignment. <laughs> That's when it appeared in the yearbook until 28. Yeah. So, right, I know, because I worked on the yearbook. This one is my favorite, because I didn't know how to pronounce her name at first. And my husband had to actually help me pronounce it. Lethia. I know. Written by Marie Delon, illustrated by Clyde Kerr. And yes, this is the father of Clyde Kerr, the music team. Lethea was an ogress, yeah, but she was a cute one. 
She's caught kids as they were trying to climb up to the peak accomplishment, but she trapped them in the pit of oblivion. She tricked the kids into drinking something. You know how we're not supposed to take nobody to drink? <laughs> she tricked the kids into drinking something that she said would make them feel better. Instead, it made them feel nothing. So that is how they became the word indifferent. So that they didn't care whether they did well or even did bad. And like I said, all of this was based on all of this was based on people that they knew. The reason this is my favorite is this one is from straight mythology. This is from Greek mythology. And I love Greek mythology. So in the yearbook. So we have ignoramus, AI, foul play. This is my favorite one. And Lethia. Who did the Ron Eagle lose to? Of course he won. Of course he won. Hello? He rescued as many students as he could and saw them to their destinations. However, Lethia almost beat him because she caught him looking sideways and didn't see her attack. <laughs> I'm sorry. Do I have? Oh, I know. Ask him. Look, ask him. So here's what here's what here's what I mean by that. You had school board members, you had business folks, you had people who was funding the school board members or just people who were not friendly to 35. That's who they, yeah, and that was a rough neighborhood that, um, that the kids could have based these characters on. And like I said, in the case of Lethia, who was a character from Greek mythology, it didn't have to come too far because remember, 35 was on the outskirts of Thor Storyville. What did they do a lot in Storyville? That's why the school was there, so that we didn't, so that we didn't last long for our neighbors. Yet at no time does the Ron Eagle waver in the mission to protect 35. Always there's a Ron Eagle in protect mode, ensuring that our students can safely reach their destinations of bliss, success, and accomplishment. Now we're going to come to the Ron Eagle Speaks. And I'm going to just jump to the next, to the last one. Thank you, Mr. Thomas, for bringing back the Ron Eagle Speaks. <laughs> Thank you for bringing it back. That's all I, that's all I got to say on that one. I'm going to give y'all a five-second break. Everybody stretching things while you're looking at this, because I don't want nobody saying I don't know what this is. Work on it. Look at your cheat sheet. And while y'all working on y'all cheat sheet, I got a costume change to make. We were our own NOCA. We were our own creative arts high school. We had the, two, the twice a year theater, the choirs, the operas, the dances, the art. We had all that. Oh, the, the, the explosion show. And the cultural, the, the cultural legacy. What was it? Oh, yes. We had all that for like 40 something years before NOCA. So I'm going to salute some of our stars, which is why I'm wearing what I'm wearing. Yvette, please laugh when you see this next one. No, here you go. Why do you think I'm wearing this? <laughs> the reason I'm wearing it is that when you talk about luminaries, you should look luminous. <laughs> so I call this the Ron Eagles Institute of the Creative Arts. These are just a few of the big names of our artistic, of our artistic um, superstars. First one we're gonna start with is dance. Miss Jarrell Hamilton, now, I don't know what year she graduated, but she's put her imprint on a lot of different dance groups and dance performances in New Orleans. She does her work with um, diasporic or diasporic, someone help me. Thank you, with diasporic, themes. She gets into the heart of Africa through her feet and it comes out her body. She is an author. She is a philanthropist. She was an eaglet, I think. She was an eaglet. Oh, okay. I didn't know. <laughs> and um, I had one dance class with her. She is a beast. <laughs> okay. Art. Mr. Myron Solomon Jr., he painted the portrait of Ellis Marsalis. And when you go to the Morial Library in 35, you will see that portrait. 
He did that. He is a Dillard graduate. So for all the Dillard graduates, and he was a professor and he's 26. See, I like y'all being impressed. Now we come to music. This is the man formerly known as Christian Scott, okay? His name is Sean Atunde Ajua. He designed his own trumpet and his own harp bow, like that's the one, Cora, thank you. Uh, he is the Grammy-nominated Grammy artist. He is a composer. His twin brother is a film director. They are, and their uncle graduated with us, me and, me and Yvette. Oh, okay. So yeah, I should have known that for the moment. There, see, okay, okay, all right. Mm -mm, Cause ain't nobody getting me in trouble with this young lady right here, Miss Veronica Downs Dorsey. She, I think she is the longest tenured mu music educator in New Orleans, at any level, at any level. But she was thirty years at thirty five, a, a student of Patricia. She is the director of the choir at Peter Claver. She is the director of the Gospel Soul Children. She has won award after award after award. Oh, the reason I wore this is so I could feel like I am talking to stars. That Do I have a picture of her? Oh, yeah, I do. Oh, the, she was called the Miss Quintessence, and she actually looked kind of like a subdued Zulu uh, queen, <laughs> although I don't know what's subdued about Miss V. Lance is one of the hardest working actors out there. He is 228 film credits, 115 TV credits, and yet, weirdly, only one one-man show. But Lance is awesome. In fact, Lance's birthday just passed. Hey, Lance. Because his next role he wants to do is General Honoré. Right oh, okay. See, I don't watch um, streaming, so. But if we honor our living, we must also honor our in heaven. Our ancestors. Thank you. So for dance, this is 35's first dance team, y'all. This is the, 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 the Garland Rhythmics. They were taught tap and jazz and uh, what's this one? Thank you. They were taught all that by a male teacher. And they had one performance recorded to history because I'm getting my time machine to get the rest of them. Uh, they, the next step was to do ballet, but I don't know if that happened. Please let it have happened. Negroes get, thank you. Negroes get pageants. <laughs> That's from the time speaking you. I died when I saw it. <laughs> if anybody, yeah, that's her classmate. Tony Champagne, if y'all remember when we used to read newspapers and you would see the illustrations, he did all that. The whole yearbook, okay? He passed away a couple of years ago. Mr. Wilbur Rollins Sr. He is the he is the drummer, percussionist uh, with Irma Thomas. He drummed for her for like 30 something years. He is the father of Mr. Rollins, the band director who was there and his grandson just graduated. This is a hidden story. This is Annabelle Bernard. Her sister is Joan Bernard Armstrong, the judge. That's her sister. Uh, soprano, international opera star the first black performer in the country to perform on her own home stage. And she made the cover of the old Jet magazines, you know, when they were small. We know who this is. Yes. Uh, and I, I am distantly related to her, but I just claim her as my little cousin. Um, uh, Miss Adele Goche, AKA Adela, Adela, the story teller. One of these days, I'm gonna follow in her footsteps. I'm gonna get it right. I'm gonna get it right, ma'am. That, that is my mission in life, is to kind of continue the work of Adela, Adela, the storyteller. But she did everything. She did a mean Earth the Kid impression. <laughs> so across genre, across, across generation, our stars shine as the best and the... All righty. I think this is the last one. I got another costume change. Oh, that's the one I forgot to put on there, y'all. That's an oar. That's an oar. This is as close to a Letterman jacket as I'm ever gonna get. Say it again. Can y'all ask the Zoom audience if they can hear me? Ryan Eagle Sports Pride Network. If anybody in me has known for the last seven years, what have I been doing 50% of the time at 35? Sports reporting. In fact, it was a sports 
fact that got me nosy enough to go research history to lead to what this is today. But yes, I love my sports. And now we are going to have something I have been working on for the last two weeks. So you guys are just going to have to deal with me on this one. <clears throat> nope. Can you guys hear me? Can you guys hear me? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the RSPN Iconic Moments of Athletic Greatness Part 1. We are going to cover the best sports moment from the 1990s to the present. So in the vein of ESPN 30 for 30, let's get this started with the debut of the boys wrestling team. This was started in 2022 by head coach Voltaire Casino. Sherrod Guidry was the lone senior on that first team. He was also our first All-State wrestler. Kevin Boy, class of 2024, was a champion in his class. There were six seniors on last year's squad, and we can't wait to see what happens next year. Let's give it up for wrestling. The swing away kings and queens of New Orleans. This is bat batters, baseball, and softball. This year was one of the most successful seasons for both sports, and I was privileged to capture their senior night games this year. Our girls team played the Lady Bobcats of Nichols, U Nichols High School, now called Frederick Douglass. We are here coached by Willie Gray and Siobhan Edwards Robinson for softball. And for baseball, we have Tyler Pereira and Lee Taylor. Our girls won that game 22 to 6, with Zoe White hitting a two RBI home run. And for boys baseball, we have Easton Augustine, who had a three RBI hit and actually scored his own run. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give it up for the 19 seniors for baseball and softball. Amaya Daggs, splash sister, basketballer. On February 2020, on senior night, head coach Daniel Allen Lewis and Eric Duncan, who is an alumnus class of 1980, watched as Amaya Dagg scored 51 points in wow. one night. Final score against the Lady Warriors of Sophie, Sophie B. Wright, 86 to 16. That night, everyone kept calling her Black Mama because they reminded her of the late, great Kobe Bryant, who had died weeks before. Let's give it up for the Splash Sister of Maya Days. And my favorite sport, anything that girls can do with football, let's give it up for the Lady Ron Eagles flag football team. Started in 2010 by Coach Danielle Allen Lewis and continued on by Coach Willie Gray, the Lady Ron Eagles were the inaugural champs of the Ladies Flag Football of Louisiana and went on to winning an additional three times. This year, they competed in the newly formed Flag Football League sponsored by the Saints and made it to the semifinals. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give it up for the Gridiron Queens. Girls track and field, the Sisters of Speed. This was in 2012 with head coach Frank Daggs Jr. and Lionel Bro. They were state champions that year. And the outstanding performer is alumni teacher Marquita Stalbert, who actually set state records in the 100 meters, the 200 meters, the 400 meters, and the 800 meter relay. She was the girls at track athlete of the year, as was Coach Daggs, the coach of the year. She did that as a sophomore. Dig, set spike queen of New Orleans. This is volleyball. In 2023 for pink out night, number three, Navea Bax recorded her 1,000th career kill. She did it against the Morris Jeff Pelicans, formerly known as the Joseph S. Clark Bulldogs. Nevaeh is also an academic superstar, ranked number seven in the class of 2024. Now for basketball. Our gentleman high hooping Ryan Eagles made the final four twice in 2015 and 2018, coached by Kevin Woo Sanders. The Ryan Eagle boys won their first state playoff game in the iconic Kellerick Street Gym. The next win came in 2018. The standout players are Bryson Gresham, Dejon Jarrell, and Kendrick Dandy. It was the first and second times that our gentlemen made it to the final four. Thems of the Fairway. This is a salute to girls 
go. Head coach by Wendell Davis, two young ladies went on to win the state golf championship. It was the first state championship recorded for the Nadana 35. Congratulations, ladies. Member of the 250 Wins Coaches Club is Wayne Reese Sr. He recorded win number 250 against the Douglas High School Bobcats. Yes, that is the final score, 43 to 8, with a point margin of how many points? <laughs> He recorded 255 wins, 189 of them at McDonough 35. But sadly, he was one of our first deaths due to COVID in 2020. So forever, long live Wayne Reese. And before we reveal my number one moment, let me salute a young man. You may have heard the story, Delvin Bro Sr. Delvin broke his neck in a football game in 2006 and was never cleared to play football for five years. But then he made it to the Saints. So, hey, let's congratulate that. <laughs> he is an author, he is an activist, and he is the most one he loves, a proud father. Allison, you are not allowed to cry at this next moment. Now she's going to cry. So we're going to have a special salute to Coach Edward Pierce Jr., nicknamed Hawk. Coach Hawk was the baseball coach from 1984 to 1991. Two-time district champions. Standout players include Chip Sims, Eddie Davis, Dwayne Stelly, Willard Cheatham, and Edward Pierce III. But in May of 1991, Coach Pierce suffered a heart attack during a pregame warm-up and died sooner, died later that day. Three game, three days later, the king was coached by his son. In 2023, new baseball uniforms were issued with his name, Hawk, and the number 35. And forever, the number 35 for baseball will belong to Edward Hawk Pierce. My number one moment, ladies basketball. In 2006 and 2007 and in 2009, Coach Lewis and Coach Allen yet again worked together to bring the Lady Ron Eagles to the state final four for girls three times, the girls getting to the finals game twice. The standout players include India Cheney, who is still co coaching at 35, Jasmine Nelson, Ernie Snowden, and it made 35 the first school to have its girls basketball team from New Orleans make it to the state finals. So ladies and gentlemen, I've been working on this one. Mr. Mr. Rowe, you can tell him I did this. In the words of famed sports show host Reggie Flood, big players make big plays and big games. That's what makes them big time. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your attention to the sports portion. Now we're coming to families. Yes, Allison, you're in this one too. The pride your sons and daughters bring to thee. It is not just a line in the alma mater, okay? We are talking about the families and the alumni ties that make 35 fly ever high. And we're gonna start with Miss Lena Blondell, class of 2024. Her mom is Miss Lacey Blondell, class of 1999. And then going into taking over for the 99 and the, we have Miss Naya and Mr. Caleb. And let me just say, this is Naya's jacket. Naya is a senior. Caleb is a freshman and their father is <laughs> Mr. Kirk Thomas, class of 2000. Next, we have Layla, class of 2024, and Stephen, class of 2025, which is important for scholarships. I'm going to talk about that. Their mother is Dana Routway, class of 2001. We have Janiah Renai, who's class of 2027. Her mother is Gabby Sider, class of 2003. All right, let her know. I, let her know she came up again. We have. Mm -hmm. We have Miss Veronique Dorsey, class of 2009, and her mother is, oh, uh -uh, y'all got to say that better than that. I'm not about to get in trouble. Class of 1974. Now we have Lawrence Jr., class of 2024, and Lauren, class of 2026. Their grandparents went to 35. Their grandfather is Wilbert Rollins, class of 64, and Joyce Rollins, class of 63. But I included that because their father was the band director at 35. Team Hicks, 
Coach Hicks, his whole family went to 35, and that's all the years they attended. I, I'm not reading all of them, but just know he has 10. See, now I said I wasn't reading all of that. <laughs> all right. Alicia Plummer has four generations and two extra relatives at 35. She has actually eight people in her family. There's her great, great aunt, Indiana, her mother, Marion, herself, and her daughter, Raven. Now we come to the Manning Dynasty. <laughs> this is the Manning Dynasty of New Orleans, I acknowledge. Yeah. Latanya Manning, who is in the middle, had all four of her kids graduate from 35. And I'm going to talk about this young man right here who just signed with the Buffalo Bills. Miss Kaylee Gethers, and I'm going to do this because Kaylee is up here. Too tall. Kaylee was the valedictorian of the class of 2023 and can go back into her family tree 100 years. Can go back into her family tree 100 years to find the first person that graduated from 35. Oh, Earl Barconi, our classmate, that's they people. David Gethers and David Gethers. So her great-great-grandfather, Earl, her great-grandmother, Maud, her grandfather, Ernest, her mother, Casey, and her. This jacket feels good. I got to get one. So this is the alumni auntie and uncle. And yes, I count myself as an alumni auntie and uncle. But Lynn Hobbs Green, who is class of 1980, has been mentoring young lady Ron Eagles in the class of 2026. And in short, she wants to bring them class, charm, and courage. And that's a lot, because she's been doing it by herself. I got my luck. Hey, I got mine. I got mine. This is one I'm going to be advertising for the next year. The four people on the top, your classmate, Leon Butler, Macy Craig, Nicole Cottles, Ezzie Smith. They're all Ron Eagles. They are all members of the Tuskegee Airmen Flight School Academy. And the young man in the middle right there is our valedictorian. Damon Butler, he wants to be a pilot. So Ron Eagles are teaching Ron Eagles how to fly. Here you go, Allison. Look at these young ladies. Look at these dresses. I got to get one. And I don't even like long dresses. Marie Louise Duplessis and Mildred Corinne Royal, all 35 grads. And they just turned 100 in May. Their birthdays are two weeks apart. <laughs> and their granddaughters went to 30. <laughs> so that's that one right there. And Tidra graduated in 84. So I'm just letting, since y'all are here, let me let y'all know. I'm not, I may not live long enough to catch y'all stories. So y'all got to keep each other's stories together, okay? Right. All right, that's important. That is important. We the sons and daughters of McDonough 35 soar fair, brave with pride, ever high, even higher. Now I think at this point is when I said I was going to Give y'all a break with the quiz. However, can you hand me one of those bags right there? All right. Now, she already know what this is. Allison sort of know what this is. This is Parlene Candy, y'all. My connection made this. You have to answer the questions. But if you raise your hand and answer the questions nicely, you do get one. I have 12 of these, okay? If you miss it, you don't get it. At this point, close enough does not count. Do we understand? And if two and three of y'all answer the question, how many do you get? One. Y'all do get out. All right. Who scored 51 points? Who? See? Y'all supposed to play up. That, that, that Come on, y'all. Which member of the Colored Educational Alliance both worked at 35 and had a school named after him? A? Yes. Yeah. 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 Get it to um. All right. She taught math. According to the video, how many children did Annette Minor Leonard have in her classroom? C. Yep. This is fun. Mr. Thomas, I got you, whether you get one or not, okay? I got you. The Garland, let me read the question. Let me read the question. Go out. I'm gonna... The Garland Rhythmics were pioneers in which creative art form? See, told y'all if y'all work together. Leon Butler is training a group of students in which field? Lord have mercy, Miss Alexis. Aviation. <laughs> Aviation. <laughs> but this is actually, I actually want people to do like, you know. 
I actually want that, so this is great. True or false? Chief Ajua designed a trumpet and a drum for his musical work. I will give you another shot. Wait, wait, wait. I will, but she has to answer. She has to answer it perfectly correct. What was his what was his original last name? It's a four. <laughs> hold on, hold on. I'm all right. Hold on. Yes. Oh, and art? Oh, I forgot. One was music. All right. The the Louisiana Weekly published an ad for this group. Yes. I need y'all to clap better for that. They I can't walk back there, David. I can't. <laughs> I can't walk back there. This illustrate oh, this this artist illustrated his entire senior yearbook. Oh, Tony Champagne. All right. Which like this? What did he do afterward? What did he? What was his career? No, you cannot answer the question. What? What did? Okay, if you get if you get help, remember y'all splitting it. What was his career? What did he do? Wait, hold up. Wait, 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 wait. Let's give the young lady. She raised her hand. What did he do? Illustrations for who? Illustrations for a newspaper. And yes, he did play football. He did play football and he did run track. Dandy, Gresham, and Jerome were standout athletes in this boys' sport, leading them to the state semifinals. Sorry. Dandy, Gresham, and Jerome were standout athletes in this boys' sport, leading them. Yes, sir. Back here, right here. Basketball. Yes. Can y'all pass that to him, please? All right. These are the last ones, y'all. I had to take my shoes off for a second, y'all. I'm sorry. Who was 35's principal in the Hurricane Katrina era? Y'all got to clap for She got it right. Yes, Lord. All right. Using the numbers in 1331, make two addition equations that derive a sum of 35. You cannot change the order of the numbers, and it has to be addition. The English teacher has stumped y'all with a math question. What? No, two addition sentences. All right. Wait, 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 hold up, hold up. You're only allowed to use addition. Which equals? Okay. That's one. There's two. There's two. Got to get them both. No. All right. So, uh, all right. Okay, so we already got that one. You can't switch the... So we got one plus 33 plus one. Excuse me. Not minus. It's got to be addition. Wait, hold up. One plus three plus 31. All right. So, Mr. Kurt, what y'all going to do about this? <laughs> this is the last one, y'all. I'm not even going to read the question. Yes. And don't be shy. Eagles do not raise their wings shyly. All right. So. Since I am also the school calendar, I know my job. Orientation is next week. Just pray on our children. The new school calendar for that uh, opening day is changing. I'm going to get the days later. Just keep your calendar open. Wait, excuse me. I can't, I can't hear. Okay, see, I, my son's 35. I don't have that problem. Yeah. All right. Major, Miss Ma'am, Miss Ma'am, major fundraiser, and I mean major. We are having our annual maroon and gold luncheon in September, September 14th. Last year, our 2024 scholars earned $31 million. The Alumni Association raised the money that we could, but it was nowhere near what it should be. So I am telling you now, not telling you, beseeching strongly, please support the the activities of the Alumni Association when it comes to scholarships. Y'all, college ain't cheap no more, as it has ever been cheap, but it ain't cheap no more. September 17th, there will be more information about that. And given to sports, sports season is coming up. Stay tuned, Mr. Brown. I will be looking to be on that show one day. <laughs> <laughs>
And if you want to go to the uh, official social media sites of McDonough 35, it is McDonough 35 High School. And make sure you use the right one because there is a site where it is spelled H-J-G-H. That's not it. Yes, it's still up there. On Instagram, all lowercase letters, McDonough 35. Now we're going to wrap this up. We are just going to sing our alma mater. If you don't want to, because you don't know the words, please understand, our alma mater is sun after everything. Oh, I do want to thank everybody for putting up with me for like this length of time. Oh, please alumni, wait for a picture after, okay? After all this is done. We do not have to sing it like we are the St. Peter Claver Choir. But we have to give it our best because we have young Ron Eagles here and they need to know we sing it all the time. All right. Oh, by the way, I did forget to introduce someone. This is Mr. Hodges. He is one of our academic leaders. And let me say thank you to Brittany, to Amanda, who's now my new niece, whether she knew it or not, and to Kevin. Y'all know who he is. All right. So. <clears throat> because my throat is hurting right now. If you are standing in for a Ron Eagle, that is cool too. All right, one, two. Yes, fist in the air, all the way up. <laughs> Ron Eagle, strength and wisdom, the world will share. Maroon and gold, the colors we proudly bear. I-35. Greater heights each day, your torch of knowledge will light the way. McDonough 35, you will always be the pride your sons and daughters bring to thee. We hail thee, even fairer, even braver, 35, never high, 35, never high, 35, never high, even higher, all right, and yes, we do that. I want to thank everybody that came in. And there's someone who I have to thank is Dave Cash. He knows where he's listed on his board, who is my co-historian. Uh, thank you to the main library. And I will be back probably next month. Uh, special thanks to Tulane, UNO, Xavier. Thanks to my mom for the, and, and for my dad who birthed the history, the love of history in me. Thank you to everybody at 35 who I ever interrupted. Can you let me take pictures and get these stories? Um, thank you to future students, because in a couple of years, this is going to be on you, because I'm tired. And a special thanks to 35 for taking in a socially awkward bookish girl and turning her into whatever this is. <laughs> And I promise I will make you proud of me. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. That does include our performance. Oh, oh, Jesus. All righty. Oh, my Lord. You did it. You did a great job. Sorry. I only went two minutes over time.